Greasing. <clears throat> oh, my throat. Nope, that didn't go well. Let's try that again. Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrex. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode where today we are building yet another new craft. This is going to be the craft which will send the nukes against our enemy. Now, there's been a lot of suggestions on what exactly this craft should be, but I've decided we're going to go with one of the more common suggestions for this series, and honestly one I've never really done properly. We are building a proper carrier in the water, so a proper airplane carrier, which also has the capability to create new craft to replace the small planes it loses, but of course that can also include the nukes. This has been suggested so much, and the last time I tried to build a carrier, it ended up way too oversized, then balance changes happened, and the aircraft carrier kind of isn't really usable at the moment, because it is that broke. Because I don't know why, but it became the ultimate craft to be nerfed and changed by absolutely everything. So what exactly am I looking for here? So what we're going to have is a runway, which is going to have at least two normal planes. At the moment they'll just be using the darts, I may change up something else later. And then at the back, there is going to be a nuke creation site, which will be at the very back of the runway, which can send nukes against the enemy during the fight. So it sends one, it detonates, after it detonates, it starts making a new one. This is all pretty simple stuff with control blocks, so it's nothing really too fancy. But it also gives me an excuse to build a craft which finally has a decent amount of storage. Not only does it have storage, it can also have the ability to make fuel for the darts or whatever else is using it. So it can actually do more stuff for the fleet. Because I really underestimated how annoying localized resources can be if you're not prepared for it. And boy was I not prepared for it in the campaign. Which actually brings me to something else. So whilst I just do a quick guesswork bit of building in terms of how big I want this craft... I do have a question for everyone. So in the next update, which is currently in the unstable branch, what we have, focusing and talking is difficult, what we have is a major update to the map. The map is being completely redesigned on the Nita campaign because the enemies kind of just destroy them themselves. As we've already seen, uh, we're not really too far into the campaign at all yet, and the major problem we have is that one of the factions is already dead at the hands of the Steel Striders. This is going to continue, and most likely it's just going to be two factions against each other, but also the AI is being a little bit weird still, only sending single ships and everything else, and there will be AI updates coming to the future. So the question is, do I keep the map I'm currently on, or do I update the map? If I update the map, I do have to start again from the very start of the campaign, but this will be an update which will last quite a while, I've been told. So I might do that to start again, because honestly... There's quite a few problems I've seen already. I, I do think that the new AI is a really good concept, but it is definitely in its early stages, and the same with the map, um, although that hasn't been updated for many, many years. Maybe this kind of size? Don't know why I'm kind of um, slowly making a gradient there, considering this is going to be where the planes go, but still. Don't want it to be too overly huge, because what I would like is several of them in a fight. So we have that... Then we can have a control section on one side. And then do we want any weapons at all with this? Uh, we probably want some light weapons, but nothing too fancy. So let's just... Again, this is just random sketch work. This is what I normally do without actually recording it, because it is very boring. Something like that. Then we have a tower there. We can have the creation section here-ish. Then all the rest of this will be a runway. Now, I know I could do a diagonal runway as well, like many, many ships in real life, but I'm not a huge fan of those in the game. I do think they look a bit curious. They can be done really well, by the way, just not by me. So, maybe something like that. I have a feeling this might be multiple episodes, because I've got a lot of ideas for this, but most of them are going to be very, very time-consuming. The good thing with this as well is that one of the problems with the nuke, as many people mentioned, which I made recently, is that it didn't have room, really, for its own tracking systems. Well, it did have room, but it's also increasing the cost for no real reason. If we have a proper tower here with decent detection systems, which can go over a long range, essentially the carrier can feed it all the info it needs. I am so tempted to have the second runway. Well, I kind of need it. And this is also showing my lack of experience when it comes to real-world designs, because I have very little interest in real-world designs. I don't know why it is. It's a bizarre thing. I love this game. I love the concept of building your own ship and everything else, but I've never been super into most naval designs. I'm more into planes more than anything else, but um, yeah, with ships, it just goes over my head. It really does. So I'm thinking like this, then we'll have this taper down really sharply. And then 
Let's thicken it up a bit more over here as well, make it thick, boy. Just a little bit, and then bring that back again. I'll be changing the angle of all these later, but once again, this is my kind of doodling style. You see me doodling a ship. It's being doodled, like a little drawing. we just one of these here, make that flat at the back. Yeah, it really would benefit a lot from the second runway. Excuse me, Lathrix, do you have any clue what you're doing? Asked Lathrix to Lathrix, crying inside. The answer was a resounding no. <laughs> um, yeah, that looks weird, and I know it looks weird, and I've actually just looked up some pictures of actual aircraft carriers in real life, and oh boy, did I misunderstand- Look at that shadow. <laughs> okay, so I may have spawned in a couple of nukes just to test out my, uh, <laughs> the size of this thing. <clears throat> Doesn't look like anything. <laughs> Uh, but it turns out that uh, the nuke's default AI is, let's circle around our friends. Note that it's a nuke. And that should not be its default AI when there's no enemies present. <laughs> but here we are. Just having the nuke menacingly spin above us, but as soon as it runs out of fuel, it's gonna descend and destroy everything I'm building. Because Lathrix are be smarty face. Okay, I actually do kind of like that, uh, so that'll tape and we hit that there. We could do the other side as well. I didn't even know I added a ramp here. That was not intentional. Well, I've added a ramp at the end, so... Yep, that's gonna end up catching every single plane I send off. It's mesmerizing and terrifying. Oh, no! That's such a slow descent! I could easily save this! Oh no, it's gonna miss! We're fine. Am I building a tower or a grumpy castle? Okay, if you can't see the face yet, how about now? <laughs> oh no, it's a frog! Oh, it's one of the bloody frogs from Undertale. Is it just called Frog It? I can't remember, it's been a long time. <laughs> well, I'm keeping that. Oh, why am I using single blocks? Even here, we must be efficient. The tower is not amused. <laughs> it sees into your soul and knows that you haven't liked the video yet. Froggit Tower doesn't like that. I mean, that's kind of what it's supposed to look like, right? If I added the side one. Then, of course, I'll put markings down. If I do that, then I do kind of want to taper the front more like a normal ship, uh, just a bit at least. You can almost hear the cogs in my brain whirring, grinding against each other and hardly even working. Oh, one just fell off. Oh, there goes the other. Yep, brain offline. Why am I making this edge so sharp looking? Because if someone fails and hits the side, I want them to be instantly completely destroyed. Failure is not an option here. Except when I fail. Failure for me is very much an option. Ooh. That's a nice effect to it. I mean, I was going to use the transitions and make it look a bit more smooth, but I actually quite like that. It's all pointy. I like pointy. Wait, why am I adding a lip again? Why do I keep doing this, Starb? Lathrix? Relax. Think. Nope, not looking at the face again. I am making this hole look truly bizarre because, honestly, I just wanted it to look a bit more fantastical. So we're going to have all this down here. Kind of looks like... Kind of looks like a shark, like a whale shark. Anyway, probably going to add torpedoes here if we do add any weapons at all. Just going to leave it like that. We could always turn this into a section to make subs, some kind of um, submarine drone. So I'm going to leave it mostly bland. This is going to come down to here. This is where it's going to end and meet up. And that will be the main hull. This thing is way bigger than I originally intended, but honestly that's fine. Because it's going to have a load of drones with it, and because it's going to carry so much resource, I'm fine with the extra volume. It's not really going to affect combat in any way. It's just going to look impressive with the smaller vehicles around it. Also, I have gave the frog tower a hat. That's the important thing, really. This is taking a very long time, but now the basic hull is pretty much done. Now, bear in mind, this is before we add too many decorations. In fact, any decorations. This is just the really, really basic design, so I've got the overall shape of it down. So, it is a lot bigger than I expected. It's now at 14,000, and it will be increasing drastically as I continue to build it. 
but it is going to be a mobile base. Not only is this going to be our aircraft carrier, it is going to hold with it all of those repair tentacles and insane amount of resource because the sheer amount of space it has, it's going to be able to make fuel. This thing will be able to create fleets as it moves. So this will be with our main fleet and constantly sending small fleets away from it. It is our... It's almost a capital ship, but yeah, it's just a mobile base. That's exactly what it's going to be. And I'm even going to add some resource harvesters to it. So if it does reach a resource zone, it can sit there as we continue our invasions. This thing will enable the fleets to do their job, and I can be way less efficient with my future designs. Things like large battleships, which consume a load of power in order to power shields or lasers or whatever. Our planes can be a lot less fuel efficient and go much faster. This enables all of that. So it's going to be a lot bigger than I originally intended, but I love the idea of a mobile construction yard. In addition to it being an aircraft carrier. And I quite like it at the moment. It's probably one of the worst aircraft carriers in the world, but for me, it's a good one. Remember when I said 14,000? It was 24,000. This thing is ridiculously huge. But I don't mind that. I don't mind having such a high volume on something which doesn't really serve a purpose. Almost all the volume is just there as extra. It's not like I've made a super weapon or something, so I don't mind spawning this into the campaign, it's fine. And it's still not very expensive because it's just armor. That's all it is really. Some basic steam engines, some basic steam propellers. We have a PID trying to keep it stable. I'll have to adjust those as I add more weight to it though. So, what else do I need to do to this then? Um, well, I need... What I actually want is a proper construction area over here. So loads of mimics, loads of uh, just bits of debris here and there. I want like half a plane being built. Because I think that'll look really cool just here. We obviously need the planes on top. Um, I need to give it some basic weaponry. So I'm going to just give it the simple weapons. You know, the AA weapons and such. Then I'm tempted to use this area here more for... Again, construction yard than anything else, just keep this runway as it is. Have a fake plane, perhaps just chill in here, because that can be really cheap and um, not that difficult to achieve using mimics. Something like that. So far, the insides are so sparse. Haven't really armoured it up or anything. Also, these are just the, uh, the prefab steam engines. I will be replacing them with more efficient ones later. I need to armour up all the uh, props as well. But that is a very, very basic setup now done. I actually... Yeah, I think this has a lot of potential. I actually really like it. I know it's not the most realistic in many ways, and obviously the frog face needs to eventually go. Or maybe I need more frog faces. Anyway, but uh, yeah, happy enough right now. I'm gonna keep on going. This is taking a very long time, so yeah, definitely at least two parts for this. It's gonna be super fun to use. It will birth athletes. Mommy! Dart, stop. Stop shaking your booty. This is a non-shaking of booty aircraft. Stop it. You rebel. So I'm up here now trying to sort out what I'm doing over here, trying to sort out where everything's going to go. So I'm going to be putting a small crane here, which will be moving around naturally. We'll have some random debris pretty much everywhere. I'll try and sneak in some simple weapons here and there, perhaps some very, very light missiles, just because you can fit them pretty much everywhere in this game. And torpedoes, once again, super easy to fit. Uh, we are going to make it so that the frogget, which is staring into our collective consciousness, is a bit more actually like a tower and less like a frog it's staring into our collective consciousness with a hat that will happen so that's going to go back going to set up up here and then we'll have all these detection systems on the top along with pretty much putting them where wherever we can we want this thing to have a really good detection system so it can feed everything that follows it Nice and simple, at least, in the planning stage. Over here, once again, I do want some more broken down stuff, and I am going to try and recreate half of the dart, just disassembled, with all of the bits of the wing and everything just all over the place. That's going to be a fair bit of effort, but shouldn't be too difficult once I've got my bearings about it, but most likely that's the next video. Right now, I'm still just armouring up the core, trying to make it so it's at least functionally almost done, so that next time we can get into the more fun stuff, like, you know, being able to make nukes constantly which is which will most likely go at the very front here going to bore down that's why i haven't done anything with this bit here have a nice protected area here with all the repair tentacles and everything and then that will constantly send nukes through a silo which will go towards the target during a fight and it'll always have one ready to go so next up let's make this thing make fuel and ammo 
think I may have went a little bit overboard with the ammo makers. We have loads of ammo makers here. We have three layers of armor underneath this. We have four layers in every other direction. Then we have our ammo storage. We can create a copious amount of ammo per second. So this thing can definitely support everything, especially since it will continue to make ammo even outside of combat. Uh, the, fuel con uh, the fuel production, rather, not consumption, is a little bit slow. So most likely I'm going to have just this fuel refinery here. Then I'm going to place another fuel refinery near the back. Somewhere like... Uh, perhaps even in here. This space will eventually be filled. We have a huge empty section here, as you can see. This still needs to be finished. So we could have another fuel refinery just above the water. And it's very easy to make this thing just a little bit higher up in the water using the PIDs. So that would work just fine. And there's plenty of space to make a proper complex fuel refinery. So that can massively up our fuel per second. Though, do we really need that much? Once again, remember, most of the time we're in the map, we're in times 10 speed. This is at times 1 speed, and... Yeah, we're producing a decent amount of fuel. Just might need a little bit more, especially if we're going to be producing the, um, the nukes constantly. Actually, no, the nukes will be produced with their fuel already intact. Which is a little bit annoying. Yeah, so what you need to do with the nukes as well is change them. So rather than having the f the full fuel storage tank, storage tank, they end up with the fuel storage tank empty. As you can tell, I'm getting a bit tired now. <laughs> it's getting a bit light. Uh, been here for a few more hours than expected. This way, when they spawn in, we fuel them instantly using our craft. And that fuel has been made via the refinery, so it's less material per fuel than just spawning in the fuel storage tank block already filled. That makes a lot more sense. So yeah, we do need to make a fair bit of fuel if we're using the nukes as a main weapon. Which we are very likely to do. Probably not the best place to have the refinery, but I do like having it kind of belch like that directly from here. So I think I might leave it there. But saying that, I can always add a fake smoke generator, so I could always move this later. It's a very small refinery right now. I don't think we need much more, and that is land you're about to hit, lad. Naturally, my creation is still very derpy, so I've not done anything to its AI other than give it really, really basic preset settings. Since when do vehicles on holders rock so much? Well, this is going to make me feel nauseous quickly. Let's get out of that. Now, could we actually send them off like this? Probably not. They'll end up catching since they won't instantly go up. So what we're going to need to do is raise them up a little bit further or angle them slightly up. But yeah, that should work just fine. Then all this section... As soon as we load a new chunk, this happens. I don't want nuke bobbleheads. I kind of want nuke bobbleheads. I definitely want nuke bobbleheads, but that's not the point right now. So <laughs> these things will go there... We can, of course, carry way more using um, docking stations, just not physically on the craft. So, yeah, angle them up or make them higher up. Over here will be the nuke processing uh, center. Then we have loads more space for loads more stuff. But I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. This took longer than expected. I know I, know I always say that, but I thought I'd get a little bit more done in terms of the craft itself. But now all the basics are done, we can start making it look a bit more interesting. We can start testing out its functionality. This is the shell, and of course, any suggestions are very much welcome. I'm actually really happy with this, but there is a lot more to do. So don't take anything as final. Absolutely nothing is final. But I am rather happy. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that the Frog Tower is something you wish to see continued in the future. All praise the Frog Tower. All praise.